everyone, Todd Sheldon at Backward CFI Pro Courses, and today, Regulation Wednesday, my most favorite day of the week. Thank you so much for joining me. And today, you know my channel mainly centers around the flight instructor initial and recurrent training, but anything that's basically flight instructor and regulations as well. Uh, today, uh, we're going to continue that discussion by talking about flight reviews, but flight training as well. Let me give you a little bit of background about this, and then we'll talk about the what the regs have to say about this. And so imagine if you have a pilot who is already has a pilot certificate, and let's say they're a different category in this situation. So for this sake of the conversation, we're going to say that this person is a rotorcraft pilot or helicopter rotorcraft pilot, and they're commercially rated in their rotorcraft, but they want to do their private pilot or either commercial pilot. It makes no matter either way, but they want to add a category onto their training. So we know that if we go to 61.63, that we're going to look at uh, 6163 Bravo and Charlie for the category and class, respectively, in that order. So as the instructor, you're going to have to solo this person in the airplane. But here's the rub. They are no longer considered a student pilot. Now, I want to make sure we break this down and have you understand what is meant by the terminology student pilot. So the FAA doesn't really define the word student pilot per se, but they have it listed as a more or less like a proper noun. And the way that they're looking at this is from the standpoint of a person who does not currently have a pilot certificate, either at the recreational level, the sport level, the private level, whatever level. And so they're training to get their initial pilot certification and therefore they're considered a student pilot. And so if you're not a pilot already, then you're called a student pilot. However, once you become a pilot, you can call yourself a student after that particular point, but you're never going to be a student pilot. And that is where this conversation becomes very incredibly convoluted and crazy and uh, just uh, very difficult to understand. So if you are training after you get a pilot certificate, most people say, most CFIs, that's my student. Okay. And then so, so you're, that's a, their student who is trying to get their pilot certificate at whatever grade, but you can't really say it like that. You have to say that's a private pilot training for commercial rating uh, or, or instrument rating or commercial certificate. So you have to be more specific in regards to this. And the bad thing about it is that the FAA makes mistake in this lingo and other people make mistakes in this lingo. So without further ado, let's get started with the nuts and bolts here. So you have this rotor head and he, uh, he or she comes in and they say, look, I, I'm, I'm a uh, commercially rotorcraft uh, pilot, commercial rotorcraft pilot. I want to get my private pilot certificate, but, but it's been 10 years since I've flown rotorcraft. Well, now here is the problem. The problem is you want to solo this person. You're going to have to do it for the private or the commercial or whatever you're going to try to get them through. But they're going to have to solo the airplane. You cannot go back to the 6187 and look at Tim Loves Bacon or anything like that to solo this person. Because why? It doesn't apply to them. They're not a student pilot. Are they your student? Yes. But are they a student pilot? No, they are not a quote unquote student pilot because they already have a pilot certificate. So they're no longer considered a student pilot. So how do we get this person who is not uh, authorized to fly airplanes? How do we solo them if they're not a, a, an airplane pilot? Well, we know that we have to go to 6131 Delta 2. And that's going to be our ability to solo this person 
in an aircraft that they're not rated to fly, but they must already hold a pilot certificate and it's only for solo operations, no carrying of passengers or anything like that. So there that is there, the 6131 Delta II. But the problem is this person's been longer than 24 calendar months and they haven't had a flight review. And that's the problem. So there's a lot of talk on the town about what would actually happen and what would have to transpire. And most people would think that the person would could just go out and they could train in the airplane and they could just go take the check ride like nothing uh, had happened. And that's not true. You cannot act as in command. So saith, let's bring up 6156 here. And let's look at that. It says right there, you can't act as pick if you don't have a flight review. And of course, the confusing thing is if we go down here to the bottom, what you're going to see is that it says that this doesn't apply to student pilots. And so the, the layman would say, well, that doesn't apply because this person's training to be a private or training to be a commercial. And I, I have to tell them, look, it, it doesn't matter. That doesn't apply here because they're not a quote unquote per se student pilot. Are they training? Yes, but they're not a student pilot. And that's where the problem comes in here. So how, what is the only way to solve this issue? Well, the only way to solve this issue right now is only a couple of ways. And that is one, they completely hand in their rotorcraft certificate hand in all their certificates so they're no longer a pilot and they start from scratch and then you can do 6187 endorsements. Or they can go out and do a flight review in a helicopter and now they're certified to solo the airplane. Isn't that crazy? That's absolutely crazy. And we'll look over here at the advisory circular 6198 and you can see here from this particular page, it says that and to accomplish the flight review, the uh, pilot is, uh, can only do it in an aircraft for which that a person's appropriately rated. So you couldn't do this in the airplane because they're not appropriately rated in the airplane. So a lot of things here to think about, a lot of things to process, but the biggest part that is confusing to a lot of people is you have to understand what is meant by the word student pilot and that's the most important thing to understand in this conversation is what constitutes a student pilot and uh, this person cannot participate in the wings there's some talk about well they could go out and do some wings flights and that would constitute a flight review yes it would as long as the person did those wings flights in a rotorcraft helicopter that's the only way you could satisfy that you could do three wings flights in an airplane for something there or something else that they're not rated in and have it count as a flight review. Isn't this neat stuff? It's neat and it may seem a little bit trivial to you, but here's the deal. If you don't do this correctly, you can end up you losing your flight instructor certificate over it or end up uh, with your credentials and everything on, on a red folder on some safety inspector's desk. And depending on kind of what day they're having there at the FISDO is, is how much uh, they plan on paying attention to you and you don't want to have them pay attention to you. That's not a good thing at all. I hope this was very interesting to you on this edition of Regulation Wednesday and tune in next week where we'll have a, another edition and we're going to talk about another fun fact and other things. It'll be wonderful and you can expand your knowledge. I love you so much for joining tonight. I'm Todd Shunt with CFI Pro Courses. Take care. Mm -hmm.